This is the heartwarming testimonial of two families who open their hearts to one another and the precious little girl who continues to melt everyone's heart all along the way. <laughs> it's a reminder that even in life's deepest, darkest seasons of sorrow, God can create something absolutely beautiful from it. I found out that I was pregnant on November 15th, 2009, and it was a Sunday. Um, I had just woken up from homecoming dance, and we went grocery shopping, and everything was fine. And I remember my mom calling me, and she was like, we need to talk. Your sister's really concerned about you. It was Father's Day, 2009, and I'll never forget it. We went to the hospital, and we delivered a little baby girl at 20 weeks. And she was, uh, she was perfect, 10 little fingers and, and 10 little toes, and just absolutely beautiful. But she took her first and last breath in our arms and we didn't get to take home a baby. And this was the fifth time that this had happened to us in, in three years. I took its pregnancy test at my best friend's house and the test, of course, said positive. And I found it strange that I laughed when I saw that it was pregnant, but it wasn't like, this is funny. It was more like, my parents are gonna kill me, laugh. Like, I didn't know what to do. After that last loss of, of leaving the hospital and not having a child, we just knew that we were not going to be able to emotionally go through that one more time. There was not one more child we could bury. I was 15 and my boyfriend was 18 and so that was not really accepted by anybody at first and so it was just a really rough day for everyone in the family but by the end of the day everyone was able to be okay and understand that things happen. My job as a social worker is really to take these two families who both have a need. The birth parents need a stable, loving um, environment and family for their child, and the adoptive parents are just aching to be able to be a family. And helping those two folks come together and create that family and provide for that child. What you're doing is you're providing adoption education, but you're also helping them establish boundaries and rapport and trust. Our source of strength to carry us through the time period was God first, um, each other. We leaned on each other a lot um, for support. We relied on a lot of our friends. We built a lot of friendships through um, the church that helped us and um, we just found our way um, with each other. And we cried a lot and uh, we just tried to lift each other's spirits. Just kept pushing forward thinking that something was gonna break. We were gonna have our big break sooner or later. Being pregnant in high school is something that is not fun. Um, I hated going to school pregnant. I loved school my whole life and I still love school but the people judge you so quickly without knowing. A lot of people told me that I was making the wrong decision by adoption because I wasn't taking responsibility for my child. I remember thinking how ludicrous that was that I was being told I wasn't taking responsibility when I was doing what I thought was the best thing for my child. People said things that were just unimaginable and they made opinions without knowing any of the facts. They said things about not knowing who the father was when I knew that it was the guy that I had been with for two years, the only boyfriend I had ever had, ever even kissed. I, it was crazy to think that anyone could say such mean things and it made me a stronger person and I've learned a lot not to care what people think about it because I know how I feel and I know what happened and it doesn't really matter what anyone else thinks. When a birth parent, especially the birth mother, is pregnant, she experiences the same stages of grief as she does after she makes the adoption plan and that baby goes home with the adoptive parents. Those stages of grief include denial, bargaining or resistance, depression, anger, and then finally acceptance. The night that I started to change my mind um, was a really hard and long night. 
you know, because the motherly instinct was still there to still wanting to take care of her and be there for her. And I called Jordan and I remember talking to her and it broke her heart. I could tell over the phone and I didn't want to even keep talking. It just, it hurt so bad to hear her that she was in actual pain over a baby that wasn't even born yet. After I got off the phone with Autumn, for me this was not a phone call that went bad. It was not a fight between two friends. For me, it was baby number six and it was a loss. And so it was starting my grieving process over again. I stayed home the next day and I thought about it and I was able to talk to her and it was a lot better and I feel like it made the relationship stronger because I would gotten it out of my system. I had gotten used to the idea that there was no way I couldn't go through with this because everyone involved was going to not benefit from it. When she called back, I was just on my knees praying to God, please give me the strength that I need to not only go through each day, but please, please, Lord, give Autumn the comfort that she needs to make the right decision for her, whatever, whatever that decision was. And so I wanted to make sure I wasn't doing anything to pressure her into it. And I felt when she called me back, I felt a very genuine, genuine sincerity that she had taken the time that she needed to really reflect on what was going to be best for her and for Madeline. And it was the most beautiful call I've ever had. When Autumn did actually um, express her wavering and mind changing to her adoptive parents, this was a normal part of processing her grief. It gave her an opportunity to almost have a time out, if you will, to think about how she was feeling. And then she came back and she actually decided she wanted a little more contact. And in some ways, that's a bargaining. So she had her denial, she had her moments of doubt, and she had her bargaining. What was unique about this situation is that this family had already developed such a close relationship that Autumn felt secure enough to share her doubts with the adoptive parents. And after that, their relationship became stronger. Say hi. The first few weeks post-placement um, were not that easy, but it just took a lot of adjusting. I spent a lot of time with my friends and I jumped right back into school. I think I was out of school a week after she was born and right back to seven periods a day, all day long, and just trying to get back to some sort of routine life and not wanting to sit there and just feel bad about myself or bad about the situation because that wasn't going to help and the phone calls with Jordan and Cameron were a lot of help because they let me feel involved in what was happening at the doctor's appointments and different sounds she was making and I could hear her in the background and it was just really helpful from them. The first few weeks of having Madeline in our home was really like watching all of your dreams come true and it was just Falling in love is the best way I can describe it. It is just falling in love with this beautiful little baby girl and um, getting your feet wet into mommyhood. It was everything that I had hoped for for so very long, but it was so much more. I just loved her so much and could not wait to spend the rest of our life doing the absolute best that we could to give her um, the life that Autumn entrusted in us to give her. Not only did I have this beautiful little girl that we had hoped and, and dreamed for for so long, but I finally seen uh, my wife in the role that she had so longed for for so long and the, the sense of I did it. We have what we were hoping and dreaming for and, and she's finally with us. Um, it was amazing. 
this family has decided to establish a family website, what they are able to do is upload videos of the day-to-day -day things that are going on in Maddie's life, and they also capture the visits with the birth parents and upload those as well. Every time Madeline did something cute, the first thing that I thought of besides being excited to watch it with my husband, of course, is, gosh, I can't wait to show Autumn what Madeline's doing today. And that gave us a vehicle so that there wasn't ever a moment missed because we only meet three times a year and sometimes for additional special occasions. But if you know toddlers, a lot happens in three months. And we want to make sure that Autumn doesn't miss any of those things. I was scared about missing first steps. And just after her first birthday, they uploaded a video of her first steps and I remember crying and I felt like I was a part of it and that I got to watch her and how excited she was and how mad she was when she <laughs> fell and I remember that and I feel like I can be a part of it without having to be there and see what's happening in their lives and they can see what's happening in mine and that might even be important to Madeline later. This was one of the first families that I worked with that actually did this, and it's just an amazing way for families to keep in touch. Surprise doesn't even begin to describe the word, but we, um, we learned that we were pregnant again, and um, it, you know, it was a very difficult time um, to go back into the doctor's offices and be confronted with the same team that you had seen time and time and time again tell you that, no, Nope, this baby isn't coming, but, but Keller Grayson Hathaway, um, he, he was ready to come into the world. And so by the grace of God and, and just in the way that only he can do, he gave Madeline a little brother. And um, Like it or not. <laughs> yeah, and so now uh, we are the proud parents of not one baby, but two. We want Madeline Brooke to know how loved she is not only by the mommy and daddy who are raising her, but also by the biological mother and father, Autumn and Jay, who gave her life. We also want her to truly understand that her story is not attributed to chance, but rather God's incredible plan for all of us. Even in life's deepest, darkest seasons of sorrow, God can create something absolutely beautiful from it. We'd endure the heartache and pain infinitely over again if it meant winding up exactly where we're at today. Maddie mended our hearts before she was even born and fills it with joy every single day of our life. <laughs> Baby Maddie came home two years ago. And since then, this family has truly grown, not only in their understanding of open adoption and all of its complexities, but I think that they have become a family. April 4th, 2010. Madeline, by the time you see this, you will know all about why you were adopted. But something I'm not too sure that your mom and dad know about is why Jay and I chose them to be your parents. When I found out I was pregnant, I thought very briefly about adoption, but I was soon discouraged because most people seem to care more about just getting any baby, not you specifically, and certainly not about me at all. I didn't think I could ever find anybody good enough for you. After about a week of knowing I was pregnant, I missed a day of school because I was becoming very stressed. I spent the whole day on Facebook, MySpace, and Twitter. I wonder if those will still be around when you are 16. I got some emails that day, and one of them was from your mom. I had been introduced to her by several people in emails. The whole rest of the day, I spent talking with her. From the very beginning, I knew she cared not only about a baby, but my baby, and also me. After I met with your mom and dad for the first time, I knew it was meant to be. They met with me and Jay, Every time I met with them, I knew even more. They were what I wanted you to have. I wanted you to know the true reasons I made that choice. Your mom is one of the most amazing women I have ever met. Before you were even born, she loved you so much. She was a strong, motherly, caring, and just everything a mom should be. She loved you before she ever met you. She accepted me, Jay, you, and everything without any judgment. She is everything I wish I could have been for you, but even better. She loves you more than you'll ever know. 
I used to wonder, would she be able to love you as much as the way I do? But believe me, she does. Your dad is completely enveloped in an everlasting awe over you. I've never seen in my life a dad who loves his child so much and shows the kind of affection that yours does. He is protective and loving, just the way a dad should be. There's a saying that you can't pick your parents, but for you, I could. I know I chose the most loving, caring, amazing parents for you. You got lucky because, my darling, you got the world's best parents. I love you forever and always. Autumn.